Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Poloi. And today we're going to be taking a look at these vintage 1979 Mego Disney The Black Hole action figures. Now this was a movie I absolutely loved and one that I think many people remember seeing at the cinema. It came out a few years after Star Wars and I think every child of that era wanted another sci-fi movie and this was Disney's go at having its own sci-fi movie. Now the movie is a little bit odd. It has a very strange ending but it is one that really sticks in your mind and I've certainly enjoyed reading watching it a few times over the years and the figures that Mego produced for the line are some of the best figures I think they produced in this scale. They did two waves of them the first wave consisted of eight figures and the second wave consisted of four figures which are incredibly hard to find. In front of me here I have 10 of those figures I am still searching for the last two but as I say the uh, last four figures that were released were very hard to find so I'm lucky just to have uh, two of those but today we're going to check out the figures that I do have and I'm going to give you some extra information about them that you probably didn't know and things that are just interesting about them that I found out from collecting all of these things over the years. From the Black Hole Collection it's Vincent. Look a black hole in space. And Captain Dan Holland it's the Black Hole action figures each sold separately. You can pretend the evil Dr. Reinhardt and Maximilian want to force Captain Holland and Vincent into the black hole. Whoa! All clear, Captain. Other black hole action figures sold separately. Maximilian, Captain Holland, Vincent and all black hole action figures sold separately by Migo. So first up we'll take a look at a couple of carded figures I have. In fact these have been uh, re-carded. Uh, I was given some uh, cards where the figures had been removed so I've actually carefully resealed these onto uh, some uh, vintage cards. These are all vintage figures. Uh, in front of me you can see we have uh, Dr Kate McRae. The card fronts themselves don't have uh, any sort of picture of the actual figures on them. They just have the black hole logo and a bit of other copyright information from uh, Walt Disney Productions and the Mego logo down in the bottom corner. If we turn them over you can see some really nice photos of the characters from the show. So this is a Wave 1 card so you can see the eight figures that you would have got in a Wave 1. We have Vincent, we have Dr Kate McRae, we have Dr Hans Reinhardt, we've got Maximilian, Captain Dan Holland and then we have Harry Booth, Charles Pizer and Dr Alex Durant. These were what Disney saw as the sort of main protagonist in the film so they're the ones that they produced first. In the top left hand corner you can see it says that the black hole collect all Migos fantastic action figures for your own adventure into the future. Now this is a US card it was also the same card that was released here in the UK so you can see it says Mego in the top left hand corner. I do actually have a card back from where it was released in Canada so this has slightly more information on the front in uh, obviously in French and in English but if we turn it over you can see that there is a different logo in the top left hand corner underneath the Mego logo and that says Grand Toys Juve Grand so that is the French sort of distributor of this toy line. It also has that text there in French as well as in English and it's interesting to note that they didn't actually translate any of the details under the characters it's just these sort of uh, bulky bits of text that they translated into French. So these are the eight characters that were released in the first wave. We have the six main good guy characters and then we have Dr Hans Reinhardt and Maximilian. I think the ones that most people want to get sort of straight away are Maximilian and Vincent. These two came with stands you can see they have these clear plastic stands. Uh, this is actually a reproduction stand that I have for Vincent. The original ones were clear plastic but uh, uh, you can buy reproductions in all sorts of different colours and I just happen to have a black one here. If we take a look at some of the figures you can see uh, Mego were very good at producing these three and three quarter inch line of figures. Uh, they did very good sculpts on the faces with minimal paint application. You can see all the detail is done in the sculpting with just some paint added for the hair. These figures have little bits of paint applied to them all over so you do tend to get little rubs on them. You can see here the chest logo has worn off and often with them the thumbs are missing and I've shown uh, in a, quite a few videos how to repair thumbs on these. That is something that all of these uh, Mego figures at this scale suffer with. Much like G.I. Joe's the thumbs are just a very weak area and so if you try and put a weapon in that, that hand it will snap the thumbs off so uh, you do have to be quite careful with them. None of the figures actually came with any weapons in this first wave. It was only the stands that you got for uh, Maximilian and Vincent. If we take a look at Dr. Hans Reinhardt this is a very nice likeness of uh, the actor but one thing you will notice with this figure is how different the paint application 
can be. You can see this is quite a nice sort of not particularly played with version. I have another one here and you can see how different the paint application is on the head. This one's got very little white paint on it whereas this one has loads all sort of uh, painted quite uh, strongly on the front of it. Uh, it just depends on uh, sort of what person was working in the factory at the time and how sort of uh, rough they were with the brushing. So some you get with a sort of minimal bit like this and others it can be quite extreme like that. It really doesn't make any difference to the look of the figure but I think it's always nice to see that there's a, a human hand but it's sort of uh, in the actual creation of these and certainly on the Hans Reinhardt here you can see that it's very different how they get painted. Of this first wave I think the uh, figure of Kate McRae is probably my least favourite. I don't think they did a particularly good job of sculpting her face. They've managed to make it look quite manly. Um, and the rest of the figure is just a bit dull looking. Sometimes when they're turning uh, movie characters into action figures, if the outfits they're wearing aren't that exciting, then what are you going to do when you make the action figure? You've got to sort of copy that. And uh, with this one, I don't think there's a lot going on that makes this uh, figure particularly interesting. Some of the others, again, you know, are a little bit more boring, but I just think the faces sort of make them work. This is uh, Harry Booth, which was played by Ernest Borgnine. The face sculpt is not that accurate to uh, Ernest Borgnine, but it sort of does the job. I just like the detailing of the moustache, and you can again see that they've just sort of splashed some white paint on there to make his hair look grey. But I think there's quite a lot of detailing going on in his uh, jumpsuit. Even though it is essentially grey, uh, there's a nice lot of sort of detailing and uh, patterning going on the top. So it sort of gives it that little sparkle, especially when it's under nice bright lights uh, like I have here for filming. Now, as I say, I think the two characters that most people want will be Maximilian and Vincent. Maximilian doesn't do a great deal. He's very limited in what he can do. You can rotate his arms just a little bit like that. His head rotates and then he has these little sort of wings on his feet that you can move up and down a bit. Otherwise he's a very static character. But if you've seen the movie I think uh, you would want this figure anyway because he's so evil looking. They have chromed his arms and it's an interesting thing with the chrome used on his arms. The plastic underneath that they've used varies from figure to figure. It looks like they just use any old plastic, chromed it and stuck it in a figure. So sometimes you'll get figures that have the same sort of plastic underneath. This one looks to me like there is a sort of burgundy plastic under this arm and this one looks like it has black plastic under the chrome on this one. But I have another one where the chrome was actually all worn off. There's nothing left at all on it. And you can see here, he's got one blue arm and one black arm. So I think they probably just use any old bit of plastic they had, chucked it into the mold, whatever came out, then got chucked into the uh, vac form chroming machine and that was stuck on the figure. So you randomly get different arms on these uh, with different color plastic underneath it. If it's chromed, you wouldn't necessarily notice, but as the chrome is wearing off after all these years, you get to see what's underneath. And you can end up with them quite interesting sort of colour combinations like the one I have here. Now Vincent I do think is probably the highlight of all of these figures. He is really nicely made. You can see that he's got quite a nice lot of detailing on him and he actually has bits that move. So with these little side arms out you can push his head down, he can hide away. Also the weights on his feet can push inside his body so he's all sort of hidden up and protected for when he's fighting Maximilian. If we pull this head out you can then push these little side arms in and as I showed these little legs come out. I just think he's a really nice figure. The only problem you ever seem to find with this figure is the guns that stick out the front do tend to snap off. So often if you find Vincent at a toy fair or in the wild he will look like this one so they have snapped off. I did do a video a long time ago showing how to replace these. There was a guy on eBay selling replacements and I've seen a few people making reproductions of them over the years so there are reproductions available. You'll also notice that his nameplate on the front tends to wear off. Again I have a video about how to replace replace that. So uh, the one on this uh, figure I've actually replaced completely because it was worn away. But he's just a lovely figure. I think this is probably the figure that most children would want to have had from the show just because he's such an iconic character. And I really do think that Mego did an excellent job uh, recreating him in this uh, three and three quarter inch scale. It is just one of those amazing figures from the 1970s. Now we come on to the Wave 2 figures with which there were four released. You've got the Sentry Guard, you've got Old Bob, you've got Star and you've got the Humanoid. Of all of these figures the Sentry is the one that's easiest to find because that was actually released worldwide. So this purple Sentry robot is very easy to find. I would say as easy as all of the Wave 1 figures. As you can see it is a nice recreation of the Sentry robot that you see in the movie. Uh, he should come with a little gun that sits in the holster here but I've never actually been able to find one of the guns and he's 
the only figure apart from Star who actually comes with an accessory. So uh, uh, if you find one of those, you are very lucky indeed. I think there are people who do make reproductions, but at the moment I've just got these figures without the uh, gun in the holster there. Uh, now, the interesting thing about these Sentry robots is that uh, Mego uh, did a little bit of reuse on them. You can see that they have these nice little hands that uh, are sort of separate from the body and you can actually remove them. And these are taken directly from uh, their own Micronauts line. Now, uh, Mego bought up the rights to the uh, Japanese Microman toy line from Takara and decided to make use of some of the bits that were already created for those. So if I bring in a Micronaut time traveller and we can put these two hands together, you can see that they are exactly the same hands. We just got them in a different colour plastic. So if you wanted to, you could swap these around um, and easily make a sentry guard with little white gloves on. It's just a nice little uh, thing that they do. Sometimes when the companies sort of buy up other lines, uh, they reuse pieces to uh, make the cost of making new action figures a lot cheaper. And in this instance, the Micronaut Time Traveller became the hands of the uh, Black Hole Sentry robot. Another figure that I think a lot of kids would have wanted is Old Bob because he played such a pivotal role in the movie and he was the sidekick to Vincent. And this figure, again, I think Mega have done an absolutely amazing job. This was only released in Canada, which is why it is so incredibly hard to find. And I have to uh, thank uh, Daniel for very kindly sending this to me last year. It was a very kind donation and something I really can't believe I've uh, actually got in my collection. He's not quite as sort of uh poseable and movable as Vincent is because he's damaged and he's supposed to look damaged uh, you can't move his head in and out but you can move these little arms from the side in and out and also his uh, little sort of weights do go in and out as well much like Vincent's do. Uh, the arms on the side you can see we've got one sort of stuck extended there and one sort of slightly in and he's also got his little lasers. I think it is just a fantastic figure there's so much detailing going on the way they've added all of this sort of damage to the front of him and it just looks looks like a battered old robot. The little bit in the middle there is actually a sticker and I have made a recreation of that. If you go to toyploy.com you can get that if you uh, happen to have this. I know it's a rare figure so you may not have it but if you do happen to have that and the sticker is damaged you can get a replacement from my site. I just think this is uh, an absolutely fantastic figure and it's such a shame that uh, this toy line and the movie didn't do particularly well which is why this figure was never released in uh, the rest of the world. It was only released in Canada in a uh, pretty small number. Number, so it's a very hard one to find. Now the other two figures in this second wave are Star which is a black version of the Sentry Robot. He comes with the same weapon as uh, the Sentry Robot. It literally is this figure moulded in black. He plays quite a pivotal uh, part in the movie so I can see why they uh, made that as a figure. It's a shame that they, again that one didn't get released earlier in the line. And the probably the hardest one to get of all is the Humanoid which is um, a sort of silver faced uh, robot where you know if you watch the movie his spoilers I have to tell you they are actually humans but he comes with a fabric cape. Now that one again people do make reproductions of it or sort of modified versions of it but he is an incredibly hard figure to find. At some point I hope to find these missing too and add them to my collection but in all honesty I very much doubt I will ever add them to my sort of uh, black hole collection which is why for the moment I just display them ones that I have. I think they are fantastic figures and they really do portray the characters that you see in the movie in a really nice way. They are such detailed figures and so well sculpted and as I say I think Mego did an excellent job creating these characters at three and three quarter inches. These are certainly figures that I would recommend anyone to collect. If you're a fan of the movie then it's certainly worth picking these up if you see them. Prices as I mentioned do vary. Sometimes you can pick them up for a bargain. Other times the prices are sky high. In fact I've only recently uh, got uh, the Charles Pizer figure. I did have one of these but he was very stained and very yellow and I think I picked him up for about £10 on eBay. So you can get them if you sort of wait around and sometimes they will sort of appear at uh, pretty good prices. Figures like Vincent though I think uh, he Will always be a popular one so prices will always be a little bit higher for him. I think there are some things that Mego could have done to improve these figures. It would certainly have been nice if uh, Maximilian had had a little bit more mobility because there are scenes in the movie where he rotates his arms forwards and uh, uses his sort of saw blades to cut into the uh, 
Alex Durant character. Uh, and I think as a child, I would have, would have wanted to recreate that. So uh, it would have been nice if you could actually have sort of move his arms and sort of recreate that scene. But they didn't do that. So uh, the fact that this is a little bit of a sort of a simplified character is a shame. I do think that could have been done a lot better. But maybe at the time they didn't think these toys would sell particularly well. So they didn't put a huge amount of effort into uh, some of them. Although having said that, I think they put a huge amount of effort into the face sculpts of all of them. But then if you collect the uh, Buck Rogers figures, uh, Buck Rogers ones are incredible incredible as well. There's so much detail going on there. So um, they do do a good job, but sometimes I think they uh, miss the trick on uh, things like that. If you've enjoyed this review of the uh, Black Hole figures, then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.